Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we will see the definition of uh, representations of Lie algebras and some basic properties of it. One of the most important algebraic problems related to Lie algebras is classifying all representations of given Lie algebra. So, in simple terms, so we want to classify all the Lie algebra homomorphisms from G to JLN. Let us say G is a given Lie algebra. So, like I said in the beginning, we will be only interested in finite dimensional representations and finite dimensional Lie algebras. Occasionally, we need to actually consider infinite dimensional representations, but anyway, for all the uh, purpose like definitions and all can be actually included for any finite dimensional or infinite dimensional spaces. So, given uh, Lie algebra G, a representation merely it is a linear map from G to GLN, which is also a Lie algebra homomorphism. So, let us call it pi. So, pi is called a G representation if pi is a C linear map and the second condition is pi is Lie algebra homomorphism. So, that means pi of the bracket x comma y should be exactly equal to the bracket of pi of x pi of y, but which is defined inside GLN. So, that means this must be equal to pi of x times pi of y minus pi of y times pi of x and this should be true for all x, y and g. So, but uh, for flexibility, it is actually good to consider representation as a map from g to g l of v instead of uh, g to g l n. So, that is because the difference is, so whenever we write GLN, that means we are actually fixing the basis and working with respect to that basis. But uh, most of the time, it will be convenient to not to fix any basis. So, more generally, what one can think, one can think as representation is a Lie algebra homomorphism from G to GL of V. So, now we can be any vector space over complex numbers. So, this is just a Lie algebra homomorphism. So, this is the definition that we will be working with. Okay. So, now uh, once we define like this, then it is easy to see that uh, one can allow V to be any uh, dimensional vector space, even we one can take infinite dimensional vector space, this definition makes sense. So, what is the structure of G L of V? So, G L of V is nothing but all the C linear maps from V to V as a vector space. So, that means all the endomorphism of V to V. So, this is the set of all C linear maps from V to V. Now, what is the Lie algebra structure? So, if I take two elements from this G L of V, then as in the matrices, we define the commutator bracket to be the Lie bracket in G L of V. So, so, with respect to this, it is easy to see that this will form a Lie algebra. So, now a representation of G is actually a Lie algebra homomorphism from G to G L of V. So, if V is finite dimensional, then we call that representation is finite dimensional. Similarly, if V is infinite dimensional, then we call that representation is infinite dimensional. So, there is actually uh, another language that is also used in the literature, which are called G modules. So, basically, going from G representation to G module, there is a dictionary. So, more or less both the languages are similar, okay. 
but sometime it will be convenient to use the other language. Okay, for that purpose, I also want to define what is G module and we will also see what is the correspondence between G representations and G modules. So, for that purpose, let us start with Lie algebra homomorphism from G to GL of V and then see what are all the conditions that we get using this. So, let uh, uh, pi be a representation from G to GL of V, okay. So, this is basically G representation. So, now given this G representation, uh, we can make G to act on GL of V. So, that is how we want to think V as a G module, okay. So, we want to view V as G module. So, most of the time uh, like we forget the map pi and we will actually start focusing on the uh, vector space V itself. So, our primary focus will be changed from the map to this vector space V because on this vector space V this uh, Lie algebra G is acting, okay. So, what is the meaning of the action of G on this vector space? So, basically we rewrite uh, whatever encoded in this definition, sim simple definition pi being a Lie algebra homomorphism. So, that is what actually gives us actually G action of uh, G action on capital V. So, let us uh, rewrite everything and then see what we are getting. So, for any x in G, we can see that uh, so, we have this pi of x which actually defines a map from V to V. So, for simplicity what we can do, we can actually now forget the map pi and then denote this image of small v under this pi of x by x v, okay. So, this is just a notation. So, this means pi of x of v. So, very often we understand what is the underlying map pi. So, we just simply suppress the notation and then use this shorthand notation to actually say V is a G module. So, now what actually it gives let us say. So, basically this pi of x gives us this uh, linear map from V to V which also can be denoted by x V just to emphasize only the element x is acting on this capital V. So, this notation also can be used. So, these are all some new notations. So, that that will be used throughout this course. So, now what are all the conditions that we have on pi of x? Let us see pi of x is actually a C linear map, but x goes to pi of x that is also C linear map. So, how to encode this together? So, that is where you you bring in this uh, G action. So, basically G action is a map from G cross capital V to capital V, okay. So, how one can define this map? So, this given this pi, we define this capital pi as follows. The capital pi is a map from G cross V to V, which is actually given by you take the tuple x V and then send it to naturally pi of x V which is denoted by x v. So, now uh, there are certain actually conditions this capital pi satisfies one can easily write down because this capital pi is defined using small pi. It is easy to see that this capital pi is linear in both variables x and v, okay. So, this capital pi is C by linear map. That means, given each x the map v goes to x v is linear and similarly x goes to pi of x that is also linear. So, that is what this map capital pi is c by linear map, map means. And not only that, so we also have this another condition this small pi is actually a Lie algebra homomorphism. So, that means, whenever we take small pi of bracket x y. So, let us write it in parallel here. 
small pi of bracket x y. So, that is supposed to be equal to bracket of pi of x pi of y inside g l of v. E. So, that means if we write it in terms of this uh, capital pi, then you can see that maybe we should use this shorthand notation. Okay. So, then you can easily see that uh, this x comma y bracket v. So, this is the notation that I am using pi x is nothing but x v. So, then this is exactly equal to x v y v minus y v x v. So, I will leave it to you to just uh, rewrite this in terms of capital pi, it is not that hard. So, basically this information is encoded as in this uh, map capital pi. Now, conversely, if you start with G action, okay. So, this is called G action, so this capital pi. Now, given this uh, G action, we call this uh, capital V as G module. So, this capital V is called a G module, okay. So, now how this, uh, so how one can remember this? So, basically each element of G acts as a C linear map on capital V. So, that is the most important thing. The second thing is whenever we have two elements x, y in G. So, if you look at the corresponding the action, the bracket x, y capital V which is the action. So, that should be equal to x v y v minus y v x v. So, this is what we should remember. Okay. So, if we have this action of G on capital V, then we call V as a G module. So, now given this G module, that means given G action capital pi from G cross capital V to capital V. Okay and satisfying the conditions, these two conditions. Okay. So, then one can easily define this small pi. So, how one can define? So, just uh, define it from G to G L of V. So, basically you take this small pi to be pi of x to be. Okay. You have the map x comma V goes to x V. So, that is the map capital pi, let us say. So, then one can define this pi of x from capital V to capital V by defining V goes to x V. Okay. So, then you can just send x to pi of x. So, then it is easy to verify this will become Lie algebra homomorphism. So, if you start with uh, this G action then that implies immediately Lie algebra homomorphism from G to G L of E. So, this means we have a one to one correspondence between actually the G representations and either G actions or G modules. So, we actually kind of uh, we use both, uh, lang both uh, terminologies in this course okay, interchangeably. So, as far as we consider for example, G representation, so that means G module and then G sub representation means G sub module. Similarly, irreducible representation will mean irreducible representations will mean irreducible module. and so on. So, both the terminologies will be used uh, without uh, any confusion. Okay. So, this actually kind of gives us uh, uh, both the definitions. Okay. So, now uh, we will also actually define some other terminologies like faithful representation, irreducible representations and so on. So, here is the definition of faithful representation. So, it is easy to 
uh, define faithful representation using the representation map. So, if a representation pi is injective map, injective Lie algebra homomorphism from G to JL of V. So, then pi is called faithful representation. So, we can also define what called the kernel of the representation. Okay, since uh, pi is a Lie algebra homomorphism from G to GL of V, the kernel of the representation is the kernel of this map, the kernel of pi. So, this is called kernel of the representation. Now, it is easy to see that if you go model of the kernel, then we will get the faithful representation of the quotient Lie algebra. So, we have a injective map from G modulo kernel pi to GL of V and this induced map, it is easy to see it is an injective map. So, that means given a representation, we all we always can produce another representation for the quotient Lie algebra which is injective. Okay. Sometimes it will be important to go from like uh, representation of one Lie algebra to another Lie algebra. For example, there is something called a restriction. Suppose if you have H which is a sub Lie algebra of G, then if you start with the representation of G. So, then one can actually restrict this representation to H. So, pi restricted to H gives you representation of H which is also acting on capital V. Okay? This is called restriction of pi to H. This is called restriction. Sometime it is denoted as restriction of g to h without mentioning the representation pi. Okay? So, suppose if we take the module v which is let us say g module. So, then the restriction g h of v denotes this particular restriction representation. Okay? So, one can actually generalize this further. Uh, one can define what is called pullback of a representation. So, what is pullback? So, instead of having this injective map, okay, one can think this pi restriction h as you have this injective map from h to g, call it iota. So, then you have the representation of g, which is a map from g, L, g to g l of e. So, then if you compose this, then what you get is the restriction. So, now what is the pullback? Now, this can be generalized for any Lie homomorphism. Let us say we have a Lie homomorphism from H to G. Okay, let us say G dash to G dash to G. So, where G dash and G are two Lie algebras and F is a Lie homomorphism. So, then given any representation, so given any representation pi g representation from g to g l of v. So, we will be able to consider g dash action of g l of v pi by pulling back pi via f. Okay? So, we can take the composition of this map pi composition f which is a map from g dash to g l of v. Okay, you have a map from G dash to G, G to G L of V. You compose, you get this map. And this is composition of two Lie algebra homomorphism will be Lie algebra homomorphism. So, because of that, this is actually Lie algebra homomorphism. So, this is a Lie algebra homomorphism and it is a 
G dash representation. And this representation is called pullback of V to G dash via F. Okay. So, we are pulling back the G representation to G dash. So, now this concept is very important. Already we have seen one example. For example, restriction can be thought of a pullback of the inclusion map. Similar to that, one can also consider the quotient uh, maps and then we can actually compose uh, things. For example, if we have a quotient Lie algebra, let us say you have ideal inside G and then you have the quotient map from G to G modulo i. And if you have any representation of G modulo i, so if you have representation of G modulo i, so then by composing this, you can actually get a representation of G. So, you can also use in this situation to get representation of G modulo i to G. Okay, this is this is one way to get uh, represent representations of G, many many representations. So this is the quotient map. Okay, so now let us see some examples uh, of representations. So we have many interesting uh, representations. So for example, if we take uh, GLN. So, GLN naturally acts on this uh, n-dimensional space Cn. So, acts on the Cn. So, indeed Cn is a GLN representation. So, what is the action? If we take x in GLN and then some vector let us say V inside Cn, then with this pair one can associate just the matrix multiplication x V. So, this is the usual action of x on v. Okay? So, that gives you representation of uh, GLN which is n-dimensional representation. So, this representation usually called natural representation. So, this is called natural representation of GLN. And for example, if we take uh, any subalgebra of GLN and restrict this representation, so, that also will be called natural representation of that subalgebra. For example, one can take SLN which is a subalgebra of uh, GLN and then one can restrict let us call this uh, natural representation capital N. Okay. So, then N restricted to this SLN is again a representation that is also called natural representation. So, this n is a map from GLN to GLN, okay, which is the identity map. So, now let us see some other uh, representations. Okay. So, now if we take any Lie algebra, so let us say G B a Lie algebra, then V a vector space, then G can act trivially on entire V. Okay. G acts on V trivially. So, that means you have a just a trivial map from GL of G to GL of V. So, x goes to 0 and this is a representation which is called the trivial actually. So, this is not trivial representation. So, when dimension V is one dimensional then that we call it as a trivial representation. So, this we just say that G acts trivially okay, on capital V. So, we say G acts G acts trivially on capital V. So, if dimension of V is one dimensional, okay, then in that case we say it is the trivial representation of V, trivial representation of G. So, whenever we call something 
is the trivial representation we mean it is one dimensional and the action of g is trivial okay this this is very important terminology so now uh, we can also take for example this uh, uh, g2 so which is the span of s comma t okay where s is e11 and t is e12 so which is the two dimensional non abelian lie algebra okay this is two dimensional non abelian lie algebra then it is easy to see that this g2 naturally acts on c2 okay g2 acts naturally on c2 so what we mean by natural action it is just the natural mat matrix multiplication that we have here okay so we will actually uh, later classify all two dimensional uh, representations of g2 okay so for time being uh, this is the only example that i am going to give so we have another important uh, representation of any given lie algebra so that is uh, called adjoint representation okay so here is adjoint representation of any lie algebra g so what it what is this so this is given using the adjoint map so we define this add map from g to gl of g okay how it is defined you take x and then send it to add x so note that how the add x is defined where add x is a map from g to g which sends given y to the bracket x y okay it is easy to see that add x is a c linear map that we have already verified now this x goes to add x is c linear so this is c linear so that is easy to verify that is because the bracket is bilinear map okay now what we need to verify we need to verify that add is indeed lie algebra homomorphism that means add of bracket x minus y should be equal to the bracket add x comma add y which is same as saying that add x times add y minus add y times add x and this should be true for all x y and g so let's rewrite this as maps so for any given ejet inside g so what this equation star means so star means the bracket x y z sorry the bracket x y which is applied on z so the add of x y z on z which is given to be this so this is add x y of z so this should be equal to add x add y of z minus add y add x of z so this is just nothing but the bracket x bracket y z minus the bracket y x z so now you can see that this is nothing but uh, jacobi identity okay so this is just nothing but jacobi identity so that means star holds no issue okay so in particular we have this uh, adjoint representation from of g which is uh, map from g to gl of g given by x goes to add x so if we just uh, work it out uh, for sl2 you can see that uh, what we get so sl2 acts on sl2 via a joint okay so that means you already have this basis sl2 is spanned by cx cy and ch with the following following uh, brackets x y is h and uh, h x is 2 x and h y is minus 2 y 
and all other brackets are 0, h, h is 0, y, x, x is 0 and y, y is 0. So, that means, if we take for example, add x and then look at it in the matrix form with respect to this basis, let us fix the order to be x, h and y. So, then you can see that add x is, so x, x is 0 and then x, h is now minus 2 x and x, y is h. So, which is 1 here. Okay, so, x x is 0 and then x h is minus 2 x. So, minus 2 should come here and then x y is h. So, this is 0 1 0. Okay. Similarly, one can write down for add y and add h as well. Okay. So, this is a 3 dimensional three dimensional SL2 representation. So, later we will see that this is indeed irreducible representation because SL2 is uh, simply algebra. Okay, I will stop here uh, and we will continue with uh, representation theory of Lie algebras in the next class. Thank you.